After 48 years, it's a long goodbye to the Diffie-Hellman method. This week, in my lecture, I will outline one of the most amazing methods ever created in computer science, the Diffie-Hellman method. It was first outlined by Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman in 1976 in a paper that built the foundations of our modern world of cybersecurity. The paper was entitled New Directions in Cryptography and it was published in the IEEE Transactions on Information Theory in November 1976. And so, after nearly five decades, that's 40 years to be precise, the Diffie-Hellman method has done so well in protecting citizen data and is used in virtually every connection that we make to the internet. For this, Bob and Alice can create session key pairs, a public key and a private key, and then pass their public values and then end up with the same shared key. The original paper was based on discrete logarithms and where Bob and Alice agree on a base generator G and a large prime number P. Alice will generate little a and create big A, which is the public value of g to the power of a mod p. Bob creates his secret b, little b, and then creates his public key of g to the power of b mod p. They then exchange the values, and because in logarithms g to the power of a to the power of b is actually equal to g to the power of ab, then Bob and Alice can generate the same shared key. It was wonderful. These days, though, we tend not to use discrete log methods and use elliptic curve methods instead. Roughly, we still generate A and B. So Alice generates little a and then takes a base point on the elliptic curve G, big G, and then creates a new point on the curve A, G. This is really G added to itself A times. And then Bob creates his secret B and then multiplies that by a base point to get BG, little BG. They then share the public values and then Alice takes Bob's value, which is BG, and multiplies it by A. And then both Bob and Alice will get ABG, which is A times B times the base point G. Basically, is the base point G multiplied by A times B times. But quantum methods is likely to put an end to the usage of the Diffie-Hellman method. The only hope for it might be the usage of isogenies, but where the psych method proposed in the NIST PQC competition was cracked due to weak, a weak set of parameters. The future of key exchange is now likely to be what's called key encapsulation and where we encrypt the shared key with the receiver's public key and then they can decrypt with their private key. So basically, if Bob is, is communicating with Alice, Bob will generate a symmetric key that he wants to use for the communications. He will then get Alice's public key in a trusted way, typically on an X509 certificate and then encrypt the public key, this symmetric key with Alice's public key. Then he'll send that over to Alice and Alice will use her private key to decrypt that key. This will give them the same shared symmetric key so they can actually communicate. This method was actually used in TLS up to 1.2, but was dropped in 1.3 as a hack of Alice's private key causes all previous keys to, that were generated and associated with the key to be revealed. Thus, we start talking about the term of key encapsulation mechanisms, or KEM, rather than key exchange methods. For this, it is Crystal's Kyber that has been standardized by NIST as FIPS 203 and will be known with the boring name of ML-KEM. There are then three new methods, MLKEM 5112, which is 128-bit equivalent security, MLKEM 768, 
which is 192 bit equivalent security, and the top of the range, MLKEM 1024, which is 256 bit uh, security. I've given the coding for the method uh, on the associated web page. This uses the circle library and which is which now integrates with MLKEM. A pure MLKEM handshake creates a 768 byte ciphertext value to be passed. And luckily this will fit into a single data packet. If we ramp up to Kyber 768, and which seems to be the choice for many designers, we have a 1088 byte cipher value that needs to be passed. And again, this will fit into a single data packet. For the short time, for the short term though, what is more likely is that we will drop in a hybrid system, such as using the X25519 ciphertext value alongside the, the Kyber ciphertext value. This will allow us to use, still use our Diffie-Hellman key exchange method, but migrate towards a post-quantum robust method. For an X25519 MLKEM738 method, we increase the ciphertext size to 1120 bytes, and which again can sit, fit into a single TLS packet. And so, in the near future, it is likely that we'll be using a hybrid key exchange method and where we mix our Diffie-Hellman key exchange method with an MLKEM method. The conclusions, so it will take a while to migrate, but the usage of the Diffie-Hellman method is likely to, to decrease over the next decade or two. Thank you.